React Native EU is back for an on-site edition. Write that down. September 7th and 8th in Wrocław. Uh, you can expect uh, industry thought leaders, insightful talks, networking with great devs from all around the world, uh, and of course, good vibes only. So write that down. September 7th and 8th, Wrocław. Get your tickets now. Do it. Hey everyone, hello to the next episode of Coffee Talk by Callstack, the podcast in which we are discussing the latest and greatest in React and React Native news. And this time around I have two great guests with me today, I'm going to introduce them in a bit, but first let me tell you what is this episode about. Uh, conference season is in full swing right now. We have started with our meetup in San Francisco about performance. Recently, we attended two conferences, AppJS and Chain React, and we're gonna discuss both conferences here. And soon we are going to Amsterdam and Paris, uh, Paris when we are going to be at the conference and also be speakers at the conferences. And the <laughs> episode, the, 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 the um, conference season, we're closing with a React Native EU conference in Wrocław in September. Stick to the end to uh, know some more about that. So let's jump into the conferences. Uh, this episode is supposed to be short and we won't get into very deep uh, into the each of the talks, but we're gonna share some opinions and thoughts and we're gonna discuss the conferences like in general yeah. so, so keep in mind it's supposed to be short we shall see how it's gonna go yeah yeah <laughs> with me kuba here my co-host for coffee talk kuba how are you i'm great great to be here again and on my left is shimon shimon i have one question for you yeah. is it even legal for you to be here yeah it's legal it's legal we have very good lawyers at Colstack, and yeah <laughs> it's i'm very very happy to be here shimon is 16 year old and he's working with us he's actually employed uh, by Colstack, and he is working for our open source effort right yeah yeah, yeah. i'm working in the technology team currently maintaining react native cli with with my colleagues from Colstack, and yeah, it's very nice. Wow, what an experience. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both for being with me uh, here today. Let's jump into the Chain React. So Chain React uh, ended a few days ago, a few weeks ago. It was pretty uh, not so long ago, but we don't have the talks yet. They're yep. not uploaded yet. I, uh, I wasn't there. Uh, I Shimon, wasn't there. Me Shimon too, wasn't there, so we cannot jump into the talks. But what we can tell is the opinions uh, f uh, from our colleagues that were there. Uh, my colleague Basia was there, and Michał Pieszkawa, our uh, head of technology, was giving a talk at Chain React. And what they're telling me, it was amazing. Yeah, apparently the the lineup was great. I mean, the whole Twitter was just tweeting about it, basically. Yeah. So you probably know the guy called Theo GG, the ex Twitch engineer. He's a great YouTuber as well. Um, there were people from Meta. There were people from Microsoft, Expensify, Formidable. So so much stuff. So many great people, and uh, you know, Jamin, we would be very very happy um, if you could just you know, upload talks online so we could we could actually watch them and, and have a recap on that. But uh, keep in mind, it wasn't that long ago, so it's still fresh. And uh, I have to say that uh, Jamon and Infinite Red are coming to our React Native EU conference this year. Uh, so, you know, maybe you want to be there too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. really feeling FOMO when I was scrolling Twitter that day when it was the conference. And yeah upload it and we will watch it for yeah, sure definitely <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if we are going to do the recap of all the talks because infinite red also does react native radio so i'm gonna wait for them to recap their own conference uh on their podcast definitely moving on uh, and maybe last word thank you for such an amazing conference i'm really looking forward for the talks though yes man yes. same 
Uh, moving on, UpJS. UpJS was happening in Poland, in Krakow, a few weeks ago. Uh, but for that, we have a special guest who yeah. was actually attending. Yeah. Shimon, mm-hmm. can you tell us some more about the atmosphere there, like the, uh, the uh, everything, like your general opinion? Yeah, sure. So I was there. Uh, it was happening on the 10 to 12th May uh, in Krakow, so in city where I live. And it was really cool. Like uh, this was my first that big conference, which I attended, and and yeah, the community is awesome. I met a lot of people from Twitter, from the the, the community. I like, talked with, with a bunch of people, new ideas, new initiatives. So yeah, yeah, I've been there a year ago, and I had the same impression. Like just a bunch of lovely people and great organizers. I really. Like the after party yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. Was the after party good this year as well? Yeah. What, yeah there was sure. an after party? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice I need to join next year. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, next year we are going. Next year we are going. Definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now let's get into the talks because from this conference, there are some separate talks on youtube already and there are also like a two whole day live stream recorded and i watched almost all of the talks and i have some opinions about them so let's yeah. jump into it uh it's gonna be a speed run through some of the talks we will miss some talks we will not tell you everything about everyone uh but i'm gonna link everything in the show notes so that you can watch the like 18 hours of content on YouTube yeah. yourselves. Altogether 18, something like that. First talk, keynote, uh, Charlie Cheever and James Eid. The keynote is about community and workflows. So basically, Charlie and James are recapping the state of React Native from last year, like the pure React Native, and the overview of Expo and mm-hmm. Expo elements in this React Native world. So yeah, a lot of statistics. Like we, Charlie and James show that so show that uh, expert grew over two two point five x. So it's a lot. It's it's yeah. over half a million downloads weekly on NPM. So so the technology is is growing weekly. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so Expo and React Native are still growing strong. They are not stopping. They are still growing. So jump into this tech, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like and from the first talk and throughout the conference it was obvious that this is an expo and react native conference yeah. so they are really overlapping their efforts expo folks are contributing to metro and and all of that so like it's great to see huge companies contributing to like core react native uh, mm-hmm. and making money off of it like that's great right because sure, obviously we, without the services of expo uh, let's talk about Expo Application Services then. That's the second talk. I was so, <laughs> in <between> you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next talk is called Iterate with Confidence, Expo Application Services, and I really liked it. There was a lot of uh, meat there, just a lot of information. Uh, from the features that John showed, I couldn't tell which were new features or which were just improved or worth mentioning, but I really liked it. The one feature that he showed that I really liked was the uh, PR preview. So you can hook into the GitHub flow with your expo and you can have QR code on your PRs and then your testers and other developers can just scan the QR code as you do with expo. Uh-huh. And just check the status of this PR. Like uh, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah, saves so much time and effort preparing the good pull request uh, template and everything. You can forget about you know adding video or screenshots. You can just simply scan the code and, and get right into it. Right? Yeah, that's sick. These features are really really simple, but really handy. Like when you think about it, like uh, another feature that John uh, presented uh, was the PR labels. So it's really simple think mm. but it's it's handy and yeah the pr labels you label your pr and then based on the labels you can trigger the builds and you can have a lot of different builds triggered on the same pr which is okay. which looks like it's a vercel like thing 
right? Yeah, yeah, we were talking it, about in the previous coffee talk something very similar, like labeling uh, PRs with specific groups of people, right, who have to review it, and but it's automated in this way. So here we got a very similar thing. Which is yeah, really cool. Uh, a lot of uh, much more things in that talk. Please watch it. I really enjoyed watching it. Let's move on to the next talk worth mentioning, which is William Candelon. Oh, the joy of guy. painting. Yeah, yeah, the, the the famous animations guy. Many people say that this guy taught them how to animate in React Native, and that's for a reason. So, uh, if you know William, he is responsible for, for I mean, what, he's one of people as responsible for bringing Skia to React Native, and this is what he was talking about, basically. So, it's worth mentioning that Skia got uh, integrated into Reanimated now, so it's very easy to animate your 2D uh, objects using Skia and reanimate it all together. Uh, apart from that, there was a big, big thing. I mean, I, I hope it is a big thing for the community because I struggled with it in the, in the, in the past. So basically, if you have this feature that, that, that you, you want to have a model over a native view, let's say a Google Maps, right? This is a native view. Uh, very often you want to blur the background. And when you were using Skia before, uh, that was not a thing because Skia didn't know how to blur the, the native elements. And now with a new updated Skia, well, this is an, a, a piece of cake basically. So so they have did something magical under the hood that I don't really understand yet, but I think I will in the future. I hope so. And this brings this awesome, awesome feature to React Native and it's almost easy like this. So two lines of code or even one and you can, you can get the blur in the background. Uh, so that's a big thing. Uh, definitely, and it's called backdrop filter for for people who want to get a reference on the internet. Uh, so that's one thing, and also they have brought some uh, great animated, uh, like pre-built animations that you can use for I don't know switching views. Let's say if you want to animate turning the page like in a book, you can do that with Skia now. So super super cool updates from there uh, you can go ahead and watch the video he is showing many uh, use cases of it live i mean live he's showing videos but <laughs> you know what i mean yeah uh so you're gonna get a better understanding of what i'm just saying um yeah. so yeah william did show some good things with skia and community appreciates uh yeah yeah so the next talk was from evan bacon uh, the title of the talk was the right ones root everywhere so basically, Evan showed the uh, the Exploiter V2, a lot of new features, a lot of new fancy stuff, especially when we are talking about universal apps. Like, uh, if you don't know, uh, the universal apps is the the feature that you are making some something on the web, and with the one click, you are moving your state, moving where you are to the mobile native app with just one click from web. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With one click, you move everything, and you can continue I on think the mobile. What was most All important right. for this announcement in his talk was that previously it was really tedious to do. You had to basically manually had deep linking into each and every screen of your app, mm -hmm. and you have to, you had to like care about the screen, and you had to actually put it in. Right now with Exporouter, your every screen of your app has that linking by default so that you can have uh, have it done by default. Basically, mm -hmm. you don't have to care about it. You just get it for free when you use this kind of technology. So it's just saving a amount of time you spend. It's not even saving the time. It like, gives you a lot of things for free. Without it, you wouldn't get deep linking into like third mm. page in your settings because you just wouldn't care. All right. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Also, Evan presented the type roots. So it's, it's really cool that we will have the autocomplete in Expo Router. And the the, la the last but not least thing is the async roots. Uh, async roots, if you don't know, we can load the screens on demand. So if we have like big app, let's say Facebook app, uh, and there is, I think, like 1,200 1, views, a lot. And, Surfaces. Yeah. And when we are starting up, if we load every screen, it will take a lot of time. But with that feature, we can load only screens which we, are, which we need. So yeah, this is a synergy between Metro and Export Outer. 
because that feature is actually shared between Expo and Metro. Team from Expo created that feature specifically in Metro so that they can enable this. Yeah, so it, it was like the, the biggest contribution to Metro. So it's really cool to see in the space that Expo is contributing to, to, to libraries yeah. and... This is crazy. It shows you again the, the, the power of com community basically and collaboration in this, in this area. React and React Native. This is this is what it gives you, right? The whole yeah. community. Exactly. Great okay. talk. Go watch it. I strongly recommend watching the whole talk from Evan. Yeah. All right, guys. So if you don't speak Polish, uh, embrace yourselves. I'm gonna I'm gonna say a very difficult name. Krzysztof Piaskowy uh, had a great talk about uh, bringing 3D. Uh, and canvas-based animations we've reanimated into your React Native apps. Uh, so if you thought that you cannot do that in React Native, that you cannot have 3D objects there, well, guess what? Now you can. Uh, he was experimenting with Expo GL library that basically uh, gives you that GL view into your app. And if you guys don't know what GL is or like Open GL is, this is a this is a standard that was uh, it's known from web where you could easily bring 3D objects to web. Now you can do that on your mobile applications as well. And he was showcasing basically how you can bring that 3D object into your app, what you can do with it, and how it integrates with Reanimated. Uh, so that you can easily make it interactive. You can also use gesture handler and just you know start playing around with your with your three D three D objects. I think if I remember well, he was showing some cool like you know background movement that w that you can um, make it look like it's three D thanks to this this feature. So uh, you can make your app very very nice looking because of that. You can make it way more interactive and. It's not heavy for your app. So if you are worried that your app's gonna start lagging because you wanna bring 3D to it, well, it's not because it is handled by UI thread. So just like Reanimated does, right? So it's not it's not dependent on your JS thread. It's not blocking the application. It's nice and smooth. So yeah, uh, this is very technical talk. There's a lot of math and demystifying uh, that, well, you don't have to know math well because you can easily use 3.js uh, library for that, uh, which he also showcases. So uh, yeah, very interesting, very cool. And uh, go ahead and check it out for yourself. Okay, next talk uh, about bringing the React Native to Linux. Mm based on Skia as a platform. So uh, Linux uh, Linux doesn't have React Native uh, like package f for for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And also Android is Linux. Yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Un Android is it. It okay. is. Uh, so, um could I showed uh, that that is doable to run uh, React Native on Linux. And he showed that the title which is on the React Native that dev page that mm -hmm. learn once run everywhere, it's true. It's really true. And he literally run React Native on Raspberry Pi. And the live demo was awesome. Like the guy from the production get the camera and he was showing like in real time that yeah, it's do able to run React Native on Linux. Really cool talk. This is the new level of live demoing. <laughs> when yeah, you're yeah, demoing yeah. React Native on the new platform, like physically new platform <laughs> that is there on the stage. Yeah. Crazy. And it worked. Yeah, it didn't yeah. crash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great demo. Uh, next talk was from Sad. Sad is the React Native macOS contributor. He works at Microsoft and he was talking about React Native for macOS. And mm -hmm. he shared some, some news. He he talked about Messenger that, that they moved to the React Native from Electron and they gained a lot of cool things like the performance improved and the time to interactive and all other stuff and yeah so i think we can move to the in that area we actually me mm -hmm. and kuba had an episode of coffee talk a uh, few weeks ago yeah. when we discussed the react native mac os 071 mm -hmm. when they caught up with the main react native they skipped two versions uh and from what i know they had a lot of help from meta 
to bring that, bring that React Native Mac OS to that version because Meta is obviously working on Messenger and stuff like that. So let's link that episode in the show notes and move on. Sure. I yeah. think that concludes the day first, the Dude, first day of... Uh, when you're having fun, the time just passes by so fast because yeah. it's day two already. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's ask uh, Shimon, so what were you doing after the conference in the day one? Did so are you honest, allowed to tell us? Uh, yeah, I'm allowed. I'm allowed. Uh, so <laughs> after the fir- first day, uh, we, were, we were walking... Uh, in the city uh, with the William and the Johnny, and we explored the Kazimierz, uh, and it was really Casually. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was really good. Okay, day two. Day two started strong. Day two started with two talks from Meta. First one was Nicola Corti, a year in review for React Native. So uh, Nicola did very similar talk last year in AppJS, last year in our conference, when he was basically recapping the road to new architecture. So right now, what he is recapping in this talk is not the road to new architecture, but the past year living with that new architecture. Mm. So he is recapping the 2022 and 2023 releases of React Native. He's telling us what's inside those releases, and he is giving us a sneak peek o, uh, on O72 uh, release of React Native. Yeah, so we can stop here for the moment. So right now we have uh, O72 with the release calendar date third. And in the, this release uh, will be a bunch of, of cool stuff. Uh, there will be some links, but af- about some links we will talk later. And for the new architecture, there will be a really cool thing. Like, you know, like when you have an app and you have uh, hundreds of components and literally one library is not using new architecture and you can't move your app to new architecture, mm-hmm. that where Meta created them, let's say, official work around that, um, that with the one flag to the React Native config, we can mm-hmm. specify the names of the components that are not migrated yet. Okay. And then you you can display the component which is running on the paper renderer inside new architecture app. It's obviously experimental, but a Facebook app uses internally and it's the way able to do that. So so yeah. Well, it sounds very complex, but then you all you have to do is just put a flag in the config, that's it. Yeah. Pass the name of the component. And... Yeah. In the talk Nicola is saying that it's it's required a lot of work for them because mm. they had to basically re-implement paper inside new architecture yeah. in order really? for this to work. But yeah, I haven't tried it, but I know about it from the RC. Uh, I think it's called unstable something. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's real legacy names or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be already the the Canary release that we were talking about in a previous coffee talk or, or not? Uh, you're mixing concept. The Canary release is from React, React and this is React Native. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, you're right. My mistake. <laughs> yeah, my bad, my bad. All right. Uh, yeah, ban- bunch of new new stuff like Monorepo, uh, Simlinks, you said. Let's move on maybe to, to, to Alex. Uh, yeah. uh, Alex uh, on a daily basis works at Metro team. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about Metro and the React Native developer experience in 2023. So Alex started with the with the overview of the Metro and how it fits and what is the goal of the Metro maintainers and what's the architecture. And we heard about, uh, we heard a lot of cool things like uh, the developer experience tip and Meta is growing and it's about 10 people right now. Last year was like two people, so mm-hmm. so it's growing, and uh, with that we have new features. In- so uh, let's stop here, actually. Mm-hmm. So that team last year was two person, two person team, mm-hmm. and that team was focusing mostly of DevEx, of tools, of internal tooling for Meta, mm-hmm. for React Native for Meta. Right now they grew to ten people and they're expanding their reach to not only help Meta developers, but all of us to have it better during our, 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 our daily work. Yeah, they are mm-hmm. doing a, a lot of cool stuff and, and also in React Native CLI, in project I, I maintain, Blake and Aroshi is also, and they're doing really cool stuff. And to continue, 
about the new features that Alex presented, finally we will have the the ab ability to to use simlinks inside React Native, and that's huge because, as we all know, the first ever created issue in Metro repository was called Follow Simlinks, and <laughs> after like I think five or six years, we will have ability to to try it, and and yeah, that that's really cool, and that unlocks a lot of uh, new capabilities, mm -hmm. and yeah. It's really cool to see that, you know, from the very beginning when React Native became a thing, they were focusing on developer experience and they're not, not stopping, they are still improving on this, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, Alex also showed the sneak peek of what's coming to the, to the Metro, so we'll have the lazy band link, and yeah, that's also huge. Mm -hmm. And and we'll have the SWC support. It's in research phase right now, but maybe in the next years we will have the SWC running under the hood in Metro. So Metro will be even faster. Even uh, faster. Yeah. And it was very good to hear from Meta folks that they are uh, more focused on the community. Yeah, you can definitely see that. <laughs> like. They don't even have to say about it. You just see that in, in the practice. Yeah. And also, uh, Alex mentioned the Core Contributor Summit, which took place yeah. in, in our office when we are sitting right now. And yeah, they, they, this was very encouraging uh, that during that, that summit, folks from Metro can gather feedback about new features that they're thinking and... Yeah, really nice. Really. Yeah, thanks for the shout out. I think that con core contributor summit was like a very important point is he in his talk saying that it really helped them unlock some of the potential, help them uh, brainstorm the ideas and find the solutions that they were then working on uh, since then. Have you been to this summit, Wukas? I'm not a core contributor, mm. unfortunately. And at that time, I was actually uh preparing the react native eu conference last year okay <laughs> <laughs> you were just busy it with was, other stuff yeah it was happening <laughs> like in the morning of the conference okay. and i was like on the venue like preparing for one to one to mic testing and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> somebody has to do that right <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so let's jump into another talk uh sorry okay. maybe, maybe this year though <laughs> maybe. hopefully man <laughs> hopefully we have sir uh, okay, fingers crossed. Um, all right, so let's jump to the next talk, uh, which uh, which was run by Vit Horacek. Horacek, sorry, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, uh, but this is a difficult <laughs> surname. Basically, he is the guy from Expensify, and he had a talk uh, named "How Expensify Works with the Open Source Community to Live Rich, Have Fun, and Save the World." Uh, so basically. Uh, he was talking about how they use the open source concept uh, to build their own product. Because like two years ago, Expensify decided to rebuild their app to make it completely new. And they decided to go ahead and open source the client part to the community so that the community can help. But of course, they, they are not counting on people just being nice enough to help them for free. They are actually paying something they called bounties. Um, so how it works, if you're going to go ahead, download the, the code and run the app and you're going to find a bug, you can make a bug report. And if the bug is actually there and they confirm it, you're going to get paid. Same stuff with actually fixing bugs. So if you're going to fix the bug and you're going to contribute and your pull request will be merged in, you're going to get paid even more. <laughs> so this is crazy because if you're a freelancer, you can just use this, use your free time. Uh, well, if you're a freelancer, so you probably what, don't have it. What's the mo <laughs> what's the most I can earn, bro? This is this is infinite. I've heard that. Uh, I mean, I've heard from Vit that uh, there was a pull request uh, that they paid sixty k for it, over sixty k US dollars, US dollars, uh, right. to one guy who fixed it because this this was some some big, very complex thing, and he actually fixed it on the React Native side. Uh, not directly in their client app, and they appreciate it so much that they paid over 60k for that. So they are doing good things for, for the community, they are helping to fix bugs in other libraries, which is also really cool in this case. Yeah, I'm sorry, we have to cut this episode short because we have some work to do on Expensify. <laughs> 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 that's true, that is true, let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that sums up basically what they did, and um, 
what he said, what it gives to Expensify, because you might be curious, why do I want to open source my client app and pay people to work on it? Well, it saves a lot of time of your internal internal engineering team who can focus on like bringing new features in, let's say. Uh, he said that it made it possible now to migrate the whole code base from class components to functional components, because when they were starting, class components was a thing for them. Also, same migrating from JS to TypeScript, uh, which would be a lot of effort for internal team. Uh, so yeah, they, they can basically achieve tasks that would be almost impossible or just not affordable for their internal team to take on. So uh, if you have a company, if you have a project, you might want to consider open sourcing your own code base and just following what they did. Well, the open sourcing your project is one approach mm. but we are also a company that is based on open source uh, idea right yeah we contribute to open source to react native because we feel that it's a good business strategy it is it is basically and, right? and this is another company that is yeah. proving that right so i would like to give a uh, expensified a shout out uh, as well i've been there in san francisco in their office we had this uh, react native a performance exactly. meetup so thanks for hosting us there uh hope to see you i think they're going to our conference react native eu in yeah. september as well let's move on to the next uh talk and this one is a nice one i really like it was a little bit uh, a little bit slower paced mm -hmm. but it is a very nice example of showcasing your solution to a complicated problem the problem is having dark mode in your app so basically Arthur Lee uh, gave us a walkthrough of what is the like standard implementation of dark mode how mm -hmm. usually it is done and what is the approach that they choose and how simple uh, it became for them to to follow that approach mm -hmm. I think it's really nice you should watch it uh, it's like only probably like 20 minutes of talk and yeah mm -hmm. moving on uh, integrate Rust into React Native app. Uh, honestly, I start watching it. Sorry, I haven't finished it. But my hot take is that Rust is becoming a go to C++. Everything fast and smooth in JavaScript ecosystem right now is being rewritten to Rust. So I guess that's a next example that probably you should start learning Rust. Just a little bit, maybe just a little bit. Tiny bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the next talk was from Alex from the BAM Labs, and he was presenting the lighthouse for mobile apps. And basically, uh, and, uh, the BAM Labs, they are doing a lot of performance stuff, a lot of uh, performance optimization, and they introduced Flashlight. So flashlight, with Flashlight, we can uh, test our mobile apps. We can locally uh, run the test, pass the every, any end-to-end -end test uh, mm -hmm. on our app, and and yeah, we will have the cool JSON file uh, with the all statistics, and from that JSON file we can generate the the cool uh, cool graphs, mm -hmm. and also what what is really cool, they presented flashlight.dev, which is in public beta learn right now. So you what can basically uh, upload your APK. Uh, to the to the service mm -hmm. and uh, pass the the name which uh, will be displayed when app loads and they will run test 10 uh, 10 times and create the cool graph with all the statistics showing is your app uh, good or or so also. it's like a lighthouse but or, for mobile app exactly well, yeah, i mean yeah okay. <laughs> exactly <laughs> So it's flashlight. It's like a smaller version of lighthouse, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> makes sense. The naming makes sense. What's what's about this talk from Johnny Berger? So, well, Johnny Berger, what he what he did. I mean, we know Johnny Berger from re, uh, reanimated, not reanimated. What was the it's name? From immersion. From immersion. immersion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't confuse it. I was just making a mental note. <laughs> yeah. So from emotion. So stop. stop. Sorry, Johnny. We had Johnny on this yeah, we did. podcast. Yeah. We were talking about Remotion yeah. here. He is a very dear friend. Please learn the name of his life story. <laughs> Wait, that, that, that's so much information today. I'm just getting lost already. That's the thing. But sorry, Remotion. Yeah. yeah Remotion. <laughs> and Johnny presented the Remotion for, for React Native. And this is also an experimental phase, but maybe in future 
uh, we will we'll be able to create videos on the mobile site uh, locally in the React Native. Mm. And yeah, Johnny was very excited about it. And, and well, yeah. he should be. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yes, that's wraps. Uh, it, it's been a long episode of Coffee Talk. I think you already had like three coffees to listening to us. <laughs> we are wrapping up. Uh, we haven't gone into the all of the stories from this conference. There are two different like live stream, eight hour long videos about it. Go check them out. Uh, but that's that is our impressions uh, of this. Uh, thank you, Shimon. Thank you, Kuba, for coming into the show. It's great to have you as a co-host, as a guest. Uh, soon, we as Colstack team, we are going to the next two conferences. Uh, I'm personally going to be in Amsterdam as a guest there. Uh, con come check us out. Come chat with me. And uh, Michal Pieszawa and Ola from our team will be at React Native Connection in Paris. And Michal and Ola is going to give a talk there, but they're also there to talk with you. Uh, and to socialize. So go socialize with them. Uh, yes, and next one in September, we have our conference here in Wrocław. So go to our website and register for this conference. It's going to be great. We are learning from all those other conferences to give you the best and like the richest conference ever, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye.